Hello. Welcome to the Freddie Jones Show. Speak the word only. I'm your host, Reverend Freddie Jones from Hand to Hand Direct Care Ministry, Inc., a local nonprofit organization based in Bristol, Connecticut. And it's my privilege and an honor to have this opportunity to preach and to teach the word of God to the nutmeg television viewing audience. And with that being said, welcome to the show. I thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and out of your busy day to hear the word preach and to hear the word teach from me. And I uh, don't take that for granted because I realize and I understand the importance of the word of God. I know that the power that is in the word of God, I know that the manifestation of God that is in the word of God is very important to have a plug or to have communication with God through his word and for you guys to use me today as your plug and as your vehicle of communication with God today it is an honor and it is a privilege and I thank you and I appreciate it now this time of the show this is the time where you can get get on the phone phone a friend let somebody know that the Freddie Jones show speak the word only is on and then they can be blessed as well as you're blessed. And if you're on social media watching the show from a Nutmeg TV YouTube, push the share button, push the like button. Share this information of the kingdom of God with your friends and with your family so that they can be blessed as well. So that you will become a blessing because you have put them underneath the sound of my voice to hear the word preached and teach and also giving them an opportunity to be added to the kingdom of God when I make an altar call at the end of the service. So that would be greatly appreciated if you could let other people know that the word of God is coming forth today in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. And before I get into the word today, I'm going to be coming from the book of Acts chapter 5 verses 12 through verses 16. I'm going to pretty much pick up where I left off these last three or four episodes when I was talking about the power of God with the love of God through healing and deliverance and casting out demons and I'm going to add on to that today but after this service here I'm going to move on to something else but I, I'm, I'm going to stay with it this time because I need you to understand the importance of the word of God I need you to understand the importance of the power of this word of God. Miraculous things happen when the word of God goes forth. Supernatural things happen when the word of God goes forth. When a man of God or a woman of God stands up in faith believing that they receive when they pray, things happen. Prayer changes things. The power of God changes things. The anointing changes things. The Holy Spirit changes things. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. So I'm going to start with a little prayer if you can bow your head with me if you will father god thank you for loving us and giving your son to us and giving us this opportunity to get closer and closer to you thank you for giving us the opportunity to put down sin and to pick up righteousness thank you for sending your son to die for the sins of this world father god i love you and i need you i can do nothing without you but with you i can do all things i can accomplish all things father god you are my way maker you are my light and darkness. So, Father God, let your word, let your spirit, let the anointing flow in this service today, in this broadcast today. Father God, let your people be healed today. Let your people be delivered today. Let your people see that you are a way out of no way. Let your people see that there is nothing impossible with God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And amen one more time again. Well, like I said, I'm going to be coming from Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, and I'm going to read Psalms 3. So right now, I'm going to get ready to this, read Psalms 3, so we can get into this word and talk about the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Psalms 3. Psalms 3 reads as such. Lord, how are they increased? that trouble me. Many are they that rise up against me. 
Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But though, O Lord, our shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and I slept. I awakened, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. That's Psalm 3. Very, very, very wonderfully written. And it's a very, very good, strong, powerful psalm. It's not a long psalm. It's a short psalm, but it's a powerful psalm. Now, if you got your Bibles open, you can turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, verses 12 through 16 is where we're going to be coming from today. I'm going to wait for you now. I'm going to wait for you to get there. You know, I know it may take a little bit of time for you to get there. I, I don't know how busy he is, but I'm going to wait a minute for you. Hallelujah. And while I'm waiting for you, I'm going to just give him glory. I'm just going to lift his name up on high. I'm just going to praise him and worship him and magnify his name because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. He's a way maker. He'll make a way out of no way. He'll take your feet out of the mirely clay and he'll place your feet on solid ground. He will restart your life. He will give you a start all over. He will erase your past and prepare you for a wonderful future. Hallelujah. That's how good he is. He wants to help you. He wants to redeem you. He wants to save you. He wants you to have the ability to be successful. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Lord God Almighty, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. I got to give him thanks. I got to give him praise. Now, if you got it, you're in your Bibles, we're going to start Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Purging from without. Now, when the church first started, Apostle Paul was very, very powerful in the Word of God, and, uh, and, and the other disciples were as well. But they were also very powerful, not just in the Word, by speaking the Word. They was also very possible, pow powerful by demonstration of the Word. You see, when they spoke things, they came to pass, just like Jesus did. And that's what Jesus said. He said that we will have power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon us. Now, if the Holy Ghost has come upon us and there's no power, there's a problem somewhere. There's a disconnect somewhere. Something is going wrong somewhere because God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should have to repent. If God said, once the Holy Ghost comes upon you, it comes with power, I'm expecting to see that power reflect it. I'm expecting to experience that power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in the church today, we are so used to preaching to other people that's already saved. Trying to demonstrate the power of God to people that's already saved, that we're leaving the world behind. We're leaving the non-believers behind. And that's why the church ain't growing. And that's why believers ain't being added to the church because we're not seeking them. We're not going after them. Jesus said, I leave the 99 for the one. He wants to get that one that's not righteous. He wants to get that one that's not in his right mind. He wants to, for them to see who he is and that he is exactly who that he say that he is. He's the son of the living God. And what the early apostles did, they went to the non-believers in faith, believing that the word of God that was in their mouth was going to produce results. They went believing that if they laid their hands on the sick, the sick was going to recover. They went believing if they prayed for demons to, to disperse, that demons would disperse. And it began to happen. And the results of that happened is the Bible says that 
there were people added to the church daily because you could tell somebody that saved oh just believe it by faith you could tell somebody that's already a christian oh oh just believe it by faith so and so this happened just believe it by faith and they would just believe it by faith but that don't work for non-believers you ain't gonna just tell a non-believer just believe it by faith a non-believer gonna want to have to see it with their eyes they're gonna have to see it to believe it they're not operating under the power of the Holy Ghost. They're not operating from the standpoint of a Christian. They operating of, of obvious, basically under the standpoint of somebody that's skeptical of what they're hearing. They're operating under the appearance of somebody that's skeptical of what they're seeing. They already don't believe. They already think that it's not real, that it that is fake or, or is this. Or is that? So you ain't going to be able to tell a non-believer to just believe by faith. You're going to have to show them. A non-believer is going to have to be shown. And I'm going to get into these, these verses, verse 12 through verse 16. I ain't, ain't going to be too many verses. It's going to be a couple of them. I'm going to get into these verses. And these verses are going to explain to you, explain to us the effectiveness of the word of God when it's accompanied by power when it's accompanied by things happening when it's accompanied by the supernatural taking place that's when the non-believer will pay attention when things is happening they ain't paying attention to you just talking that that ain't gonna catch their ear that ain't gonna catch their eye they're gonna have to see something happen they're gonna have to see why you think people follow jesus around so much because they know that when they was in the presence of Jesus, he was going to make something happen. He won't just going to be yapping his jaws. He won't just going to be talking. I mean, the, the, the blind see after they was in his presence. I, I mean, the deaf heard after they was in his presence. I mean, the leper was cleansed after they was in his presence. When you come into the presence of Jesus, your life going to change. And it's going to be something that you can see. That's why he had crowds all around him. Not because of his eloquent speech. Not because of how educated he was, because Jesus made things happen. And now it's time for us, the church, the body of Christ, little Jesuses. It's time for us to stop just yapping our gums and sounding good in the sermon, uh, being educated when we speak. It's time for us to start making something happen. You can talk until your lips fall off. If ain't nothing happen, ain't no non-believer going to get saved. You could be as educated as you want to be, but if there ain't nothing happening, ain't no non-believers getting saved. So it's time for us to put off our education. I'm not saying that education is bad or education is wrong, but more importantly than your education is the power of God and the anointing. So it's time for us to start op actually operating in the anointing and let God be true and let every man be a liar. And stop trying to put the pressure on ourselves as if it's something that we have to do. No, no, no. Surrender yourself unto God and let him work through you. Let him talk through you and let the power of God manifest itself through you. So I'm going to get into these couple verses, verse 12 through verse 16. And we can, we're going to see how the world responds when they see a man of God operating in faith and things are actually happening in their eyesight that they can see. See what non-believers say after that. See how non-believers respond after that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Verse 12. Acts chapter 5. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. All right, verse 12 says, By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. So the people saw signs and wonders happen. The people saw signs and wonders happening from Paul, from Peter, from John, and from the other disciples. And this is catching their the attention now. Now they're seeing all these things happening, and now they're being able to catch the attention of the people. Verse 13. And of the rest do of no man join himself to them. 
but the people magnified them. I'm going to read verse 13 one more time. And of the rest do of no man join himself to them, but the people magnifying them. For, from what Paul and the disciples were doing, the Bible said no man joined themselves unto them. Because there was not too many men that was willing to put it all on the line by trying to speak things into existence. By casting out demons and casting out devils. They thought that it was something that they had to do under their own power or under their own accord. But it comes that point in time when you realize that it's not me, but it's him that's on the inside of me. And your faith begins to grow when you begin to do things that other men are not willing to do. You will begin to speak things that other men are afraid to speak because they're afraid. What, what if it don't come to pass? If it don't come to pass, that's that's not your fault. That is not on you. You are not the one healing the body. You are not the one casting out the demons and the devil. This God through you. So when you become so full of yourself, thinking it's something that you're doing, you will be most likely inclined not to try to speak that way just in case it don't happen. But you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and let God use you and speak through you and talk through you. And that's why it says here in verse 10, and of the rest do of no man join himself unto them. They couldn't do what they did. The rest of the men didn't have the faith to do what they did. They were, they were afraid to fail. They were afraid for what they were to were going to say wasn't going to happen. They were afraid it wasn't going to come to pass and it would make them look bad and give them a bad name. You see, when you get in a position when you're more concerned about your name, when you're more concerned about something making you look bad, God can't use you as efficiently and as effectively as he is willing to. You're, you're pretty much, you're holding your own self back. Verse 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of men and women. So when people begin to see these things take place by the disciples, I mean the church just begin to just grow. Believers are just coming into the church by groves because of what they see, what they eye. Not because of what they hear, but because of what they see. You're going to save non-believers by what they see. It ain't going to be too much about what they hear. Verse 14, one more time. And believers were the more added to the Lord, multitudes, both men and women. Verse 15. And so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. When they know that you are for real, when they know that you the real deal, when they know that you are who you say that you are, that's when you catch the attentions of people that don't believe. And the Bible says that when they realized that Peter was the real deal and Paul was the real deal and the rest of these disciples were the real deal, they had family members that were sick. They had people that were going through things. They didn't wait any longer. They began to just put them on the couch and put them wherever they had to do to get them into the presence of these disciples because they knew that if they could get their family members in the presence of these disciples, things were going to change. Same way, the same way that it was with Jesus. They knew if they could get their sick in the presence of Jesus, their life was going to change. They knew if they could get the demon possessed in the presence of Jesus, their life was going to change. So that's what the people are doing right here. They seeing that that same power, that same anointing, that same love that was on Jesus is on Peter and it's on the rest of the disciples because they humbled themselves enough to know that it ain't me. It's him that is on the inside of me. And when you let that which is on the inside of you overcome you, you will be able to do the impossible. You will be able to do the supernatural. You will be able to do the things that Jesus have done. And these non-believers are beginning to take notice. Hallelujah. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And guess what? And they were all healed. Every single one of them. The Bible says everyone that was brung to the apostles was healed. 
everyone that came to the apostle that had demonic spirits in them, the spirits was cast out. What I'm saying to you right now today is, is you ready to let God take you to another level of understanding? Is you ready to break out of the box of religion? Is you ready to break out of the box of denominationalism? This denomination believes in healing and deliverances. This denomination don't believe in healing and deliverances. This denomination believes in Jesus only. This denomination believes in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The devil got us running around like a rat in a rat race. Any, everything except for focusing on God. Anything except for being united, coming together as one unit, as one body. Jesus is the head and we're the body. We are to occupy as one body. As long as we're divided, as long as we're bickering and arguing once amongst each other, we're never going to be able to do the thing that we are capable of doing through the power of God because we're too busy. We got too much things going on and we're fighting amongst ourselves instead of realizing that the devil is our op. That's what the op is, the devil. Your op is not somebody from another denomination. Your op is not a soul that's lost. Your op is the devil. And once we get that into our mindset, then we understand that fully, then we can operate and walk in the full power that is granted unto us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, at this time of the show, I would like to say thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to come into your home, into your living rooms, and into your life. To just open up your eyes and open up your spirit to let you realize and see that all things is possible to him that believe. And with God on your side, you can accomplish every feat, every obstacle, everything that you have going on in your life. Hallelujah. And right now, I want to talk to that person that didn't give his life over to the Lord. That person is struggling. You're looking for an answer. You're looking for a way out. You're trying to you, you re realize that there's, there's more to life. I want to let you know right now that if you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, your life will change forever for the better because of the love that Jesus Christ has for you. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and Savior, he will come in. He will suck with you. He will begin to open up your mind and your heart to knowledge and wisdom and understanding. He will teach you how to navigate and walk through this hateful and this hateful and this evil world and this evil generation that we're in. He will give you a peace that passes all understanding. And if you said that prayer with me, you are now saved. You are now a child of the king. You are now walking with the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And amen one time again. Until the next time. God bless. Water's warm at Jaws Pond, and we're stocked full of treasures. Big or small, we buy it all. We buy and sell fast rides, power tools, vintage guitars, and so much more. Walk the plank in style with our fine jewelry, diamonds, and watches. Plus, we have a huge selection of the latest video games, including the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Jaws Pond, conveniently located on Meriden Waterbury Turnpike in Southington and West Main Street in New Britain.